Welcome back everyone, let's play Rule the Waves as Great Britain, episode number 34. Now to start off this episode, instead of talking a little bit about our Ajax class battlecruiser, which I am pretty excited about, maybe, uh, I think Blinson made the comment that the turret armor might need to have been higher. It's only from 12 to 13 from the fortune class. Uh, I think we're going to chance it though, I mean obviously we already started building it so we'll leave it as is, but I'd like to start off this video with a quick shift in gears to talk about like uh, one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these series so much, which is because of the, the viewers, the commenters, um, the people who are active in talking about this game and, you know, the people on the forums who I haven't talked to, you know, I haven't been on the forums much lately. Uh, but for all, those are like a lot of the enthusiasm I have for recording these episodes comes from that. So I, I want to, this is our catch up on all the user submissions, little like intro, well, intro to the video. So first of all, I want to show Josh Street has just done, as always, a phenomenal job. This is his, the most recent one, I hope. This is as of episode 28, so I think it's the most recent one. Did he send me another one with the, uh, with the Ajax class? I don't think so. Anyways, you can see that he just spends a lot of time. Uh, some of these designs, I think a few of these were done by, was it Finnish Jaeger? I forget who it was the other, I'm so sorry. I can't remember the other individual, but uh, wait. Yeah, yeah, it says it right here. I'm <laughs> silly, Finnish Jaeger. Uh, so it, some of these are not all his original drawing, but he compiled them all into the same thing. He has like a brief mention of what happened to everyone. And he posts these things on my Discord if you're interested in uh, looking more at what he does and you can just he's J Street on the on the Discord his uh, his handle his tag so you can always just uh, send him a message there and uh, he'll probably respond by sharing these things with you um, or you guys can collaborate work together you can maybe send him a ship submission I'm putting words in his mouth okay so the Kingfisher was also the finish shaker but uh, most of these are his original work and it, it's just fantastic and the amount of time that goes into this does not go unnoticed by me um, now, I I don't ask that these things are done. I just really enjoy it, it when people are doing these things. Look at the Fortune class. What a beautiful ship. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine how the Ajax would look even better than that because it looks pretty good. But anyways, uh, I enjoy the these little projects people do. Um, we have also... Incompetent Idiot has been a little quieter in this series, but he did have... Let's see. Yeah, this is what he had. The Territorial Expansions, Evolution of the British Empire. So this is 1900. Then we have 1901. I don't know what happened between here. Uh, I could actually look at all these, but it would take a long time. So this is just the evolution. I think the biggest one is 1906, seven, something. One of these is the important one where we actually acquired, uh, where is it? Here. We actually acquired the Aleutian Islands, which was nice. There was some other stuff going on here. This is probably where we started losing. Or is that where we gained Caribbean holdings or where we lost them? Well, it's all gone as of 1918, which is sad. And then he even um, included a, a most recent one, which I want to acknowledge as well. We have this one, which is after... Oh, that is 1918. So that was the last one there. So that's how we currently look. Then we can also go to... Josh Street has this fantastic... Uh, document with all the stuff that he puts on the comments which is awesome he always leaves it the relevant comment will be on the relevant relevant video but he has, just has the fate of every single ship and again I think this is something he wouldn't mind I hope he doesn't mind me sharing he shares freely with me I hope it's okay that it's visible for everyone and if you want to read this list yourself again and just uh, go on discord message him um, maybe I'll try to pin some of those uh, so that people can find it. And now also we have um, lightning. Lightning has a second word to it, but the <laughs> forget the second word. Lightning something or other. Uh, anyways, I just call him lightning. <laughs> he made this beautiful list of the Japan fleet, the Spanish fleet, and the British fleet, um, the playthroughs. And we can back out some pretty interesting information from this. He has maintenance costs versus speed versus weapons. So probably if somebody was doing data analysis, um, you know, you could actually get a lot of information out of this. So I just want to acknowledge all these um, 
like contributions that people are sending me and it's just great to see again the enthusiasm other people have mostly it's just gonna be through commenting or just watching just watching but uh, yeah I just wanted to acknowledge those okay so back underway how long was that uh, five minutes okay that was perfect as long as it's not more than five minutes I think we can leave that in there okay so let's move on what is our goal right now go to war with Germany we had not the best thing of tensions um, in the last episode we got tensions up with Germany pretty well but then ironically Russia is increasing tensions and of course America which we are pretty happy about looks like we have reconstruction on our Glyndor classes are finishing I believe that was ah oh boy it's too early for war with the US I think I mean, this is almost surely going to lead to war. I love that we can view the almanac here, so I can kind of take a look at how far behind we are. Now, we have 11 in service. That was all the Glendur finishing. But 10 of those are Glendur, which means strategically we're in good position. Tactically, we're in terrible shape. We only have four ships capable of dealing with, you know, what is presumably... A very strong main fleet of the Americans just because they are not doing any kind of strategic ships we can see that they have 38,000 ton battle cruisers out with 15 inch guns and oh gosh oh heavens uh, they have some with 11 15 inch guns out which is just very very scary three of them. Three of these Randolph class battlecruisers, which are actually terrifying. They lower the speed to increase the gunnage, and I think that that's a really good decision. I left the speed for ours at 28. I probably could have even gone down to 27 just to save a little bit of engine space. I, uh, I might have min-maxed that a little bit, but in terms of dreadnoughts, 15 inch, 15 inch. Okay, this is not as good. Though they do have some 42,000 ones in building, which are, yeah, that's terrifying. Speed of 25 Dreadnought, that's a little bit strange. Kind of, I mean, it's only one knot slower than their battle cruiser. 812, oh, is, uh, yeah, these 15 inch guns, that's practically a Dreadnought. It's hard to say, this is almost more of a Dreadnought than this is because of the gun configuration. Anyway, I think we've made our decision. We are not going to... We're going to do this. Oof. Just squeak out. I would have loved the budget up, of course. Of course. But it, we just can't get away with it right now. Now, if I start building new battle cruisers, I'll have to pull up the ship list off camera to actually put names on it. Um, we have 5 million. That's really... I mean, I guess we have to do the next building of the Ajax. Can't wait much longer. Ah, the Indefatigable. I like that name. I don't know if it's anybody's, but we're going to accelerate this. Ah, darn it. We only get two months. So, yeah, we get two months. Okay, so we're going to... That's what we need to do. Wait for around 18 or so. I think 20 is an okay time. We've already saved seven months of not paying extra acceleration to get two months shaved off. Obviously, if we did it now, it only has the same two-month effect. So better wait seven months and then do it. We'll do it around the 20 mark. Uh, that sounds good to me. We're back negative, so we can only build two of these battle cruisers, which is unfortunate, but hopefully we'll be okay with only building like four of them in total, and then we'll have to start thinking about the next dreadnought. Okay, and we have... I did say that we would probably... Okay, so we have the Glinder class out, and these need to go... They're actually lower maintenance, if I'm not mistaken. They're actually lower maintenance than my Hornblower class, which is crazy. Just crazy to think about. So these are the ones we need to be stationing in the proper areas now. I mean, the maintenance is just must be so tied to speed, because 17 versus 19 looks like... It looks almost like that ratio. So... Um, 
Well, where do we want these guys to go then? Uh, should we just, okay, how much is this? This is 12 times three, let's call it slightly under. So it's like 3.5 million in maintenance that we're paying for these battleships. And they are old, but we did just refit them in 1914. And if we cancel, if we scrap them all, we're going to be in a pretty poor shape in terms of tonnage we can move around. <sighs> yeah, this is definitely a tough decision. But I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to scrap these. They're no longer useful. They don't add as much strategic points as well. We pay more maintenance for them. Okay, we're going to do it. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> no, don't do it. Not yet. Not yet. There's a few on elite status, and I think we'll just keep those. So if you're on elite status, you've made the cut. Everyone else is going to get scrapped. Okay, we got a million for that, and then we also get four that were still available. Caribbean, not the best place for, to be. I think that all of these are going to move. The best place is probably Southeast Asia. Yeah, I think we'll just leave these guys in Southeast Asia. Another thing we could do is actually just try to accrue points in Northern Europe itself, but I don't want these actually involved in anything. So yeah, let's move them. Oh, they wouldn't be that bad in the Caribbean. I mean, the Mediterranean either. That would definitely be enough stuff. Uh, yeah, I think I am just going to do Southeast Asia and then two in the Caribbean. Caribbean. Uh, no, Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Sorry. There it is. So I think that's fine. Two and two. We'll probably add some additional Glinder class. Now it doesn't make sense to add additional ones. Maybe they should all just go to the Mediterranean. Um, the thought process I have here is where are they? I want to keep them all grouped together. So I think I will send them all to one place. And where are they going to be the most useful and also uh, the least likely to get involved in a huge engagement? Well, there's nothing in the Mediterranean except like Italy and ourselves. So I guess France is technically there, but we don't have to worry about them right now. And Southeast Asia is probably a better place for our Glinder class. What I could do is maybe put one into Northeast Asia. Yeah. All right, let's do the split. Two for the Mediterranean is fine, and then two for Northeast Asia. I'm gonna do it that way. The reason for this is Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is still going to be the Glinders domain. So you're going eventually to the Mediterranean. Good. Okay, that's what I wanted. So the Glinder class is now going to take over foreign station duty. We'll just grab like the last, how many are we missing? 101,000. Oh dear, that's actually eight times 15. This should be enough. Actually, well, let's just get all of them to be foreign station. And we're, we're okay. Okay, so then you two are going to move to Southeast Asia. And, and really what this says to me is I should be building more Glinder class. <laughs> are, are these exactly up to, as far up to date as they can get? They're 12 inch, 120, improved director, which is the best we have. Um, we could bulge them. Oh, we could bulge them. That's right. That would probably only take their speed down to 16. Which is pretty darn slow, I mean. <laughs> but at the same time, they are very... Uh, we don't... A, a torpedo is going to sink these anyway. They're so light. So we don't need to worry about bulging. So we won't. Okay, that's good. I think we want more of these though, right? How many do we have? We had 10... 10's not that many. I wish I did have a few more, but that will impede our ability to build more Ajax class. So let's just build another Ajax instead. 
Okay, the inconstant. That doesn't sound like a medical problem at all. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this. We have one here that's still on foreign stations. We'll turn that one off foreign stations. We still have enough with our Glinder class. How many can we get free? Okay, so exactly that many is how many we need. Fantastic. Okay, good. So we have our elite battleships, which is fine. And then we have our, you know, dreadnoughts that are moving in with the better strategic points, which is better. Okay, that was a tough decision, I have to say. Um, budget up, prestige down, absolutely. We need to keep tensions down with the Americans and tensions up with Germany. Who, right now, we would actually be able to face, I think, okay because of our foreign stations, but also having our dreadnoughts. Yeah, we need more strategic points. But oh gosh, we just need it so badly. Is the is the dreadnought, is the Glindor, is she really, she takes 26 months? Um, very sh strange, of course, that the Glindor takes 26 months, but the um, Ajax, for example, takes 27. Obviously, just incomparable. This is three times the displacement. You would not expect this Glinder to take anywhere near as much time, but uh, let's look at the maintenance, by the way, upcoming maintenance for the Ajax is only 712,000. That's not as bad as I was expecting, considering her very high speed. Um, fortune class is 540, so that's pretty significant. Glinder, two, oh, the, actually the 1922 is at only 211. That's, oh gosh, I just, I have to build two more of them. The strategic points, this is how we're gonna win with our submarines, right? We already know our submarines are gonna be what carries the day. So we just need to hold out long enough. And that means building battle cruisers that can fight in the battle cruiser actions or run away, and then strategic things so that we're not invaded or that we can invade ourselves. And we have 169, wow, that's a lot of submarines. Okay, I'm, I'm quite content with this, in fact. Speaking of submarines, they are finishing right on cue. Whew, that was a tough call to scrap those battleships. And I it was also a tough call to order two more Glindor class. But that 211 maintenance is really nice. I don't I'll fully understand. Um, this is one thing I was talking to Lightning about. You saw his really elaborate spreadsheet. Was how does the maintenance plan pan out? And I'm sure it's mostly due to engines, but... The interesting thing is when you retrofit, the maintenance cost goes down. Okay, better AP penetration, fantastic. I don't think we can wait much longer for these ships. We're probably just gonna have to order a retrofit as is. And then do another one with the quality guns should we need to after that. So go ahead and do this. The Comus class, she's still going to be with us. She's still going to be fighting increased elevation for these guns. And this is fine. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Rebuild all of them. What? Oh, I see. Monthly build cost is... I thought it was a million and a half per thing, but that's... I was misreading it. Okay, so let's get all the Comus class to just refit. They're all in Europe anyways, which is nice. Northern Europe. Three months, I think it said, right? Three months, yeah. Okay. And the Achilles as well. I really wish we had... I, I'm going to wait one month just so the game doesn't get a... pull one over on me and get to get six inch guns in this next part, but uh, this will dispel doom, absolutely. Oh boy. Weight savings our machinery, that's gonna be, well, it would have been most useful for our battle cruisers. We're on the precipice of war with the United States. This is not what I wanted. Not what I wanted at all. Okay. Well, there it is. Okay, well, we have two Dreadnoughts. What two Dreadnoughts do we have over there? Two Glinder classes. We will decline this. <laughs> Convoy attack. We have a probably a Glinder, indeed. We'll decline this as well. 
Okay, let's move to unrestricted so that we get the most bang for our buck out of our submarines. Let's next go down to our minesweepers. If we fight two more wars with the United States, would anybody really complain? 44, that's going to be quite good for our own defenses. Uh, yeah, this will hopefully be just a really quick war to win a few points. Hopefully no territory exchanged. Um... The fortune class now are so outdated, although 28, that means they can run away. We could chance moving them into the, okay, where, where do we want to move them? What, what does our intel say? We don't know their location anymore, darn it. That was really nice when we did. Probably if I was paying closer attention, we would know. One, yeah, much better in the Caribbean. So let's move them to the Caribbean. Let's do it. Actually, how many ships do they have in Europe? None. Oh, oh, well, I mean, no big ships. Okay, fine. Okay, we'll move them there. Whoever's in the Caribbean is going to move the heck out. We'll get them out over to Southeast Asia. Good. So we, even though we're at war with the U.S., we can still use our Panama Canal, <laughs> which is awesome. Okay, let's see what happens next. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm missing. I don't think so. Okay, we got our ships back. Nice, very nice. Be very interesting to see how many ships our subs are going to sink. Okay, two, three, four, five, six. And 25 more on top of that with three submarines sunk. That's really good. Quite good. Okay, it looks like the U.S. is going to ask us to name their ships again. And they sink one ship. <laughs> 25 to 1. Okay, but a few extras are coming in here. Uh, wow, they're already having whew, food shortages. Decline that. A cruiser action. I don't imagine that this is actually what it appears to be. And we somehow have three dreadnoughts, which are obviously our Glinder class. But we don't have... I'm going to decline this because I think it'll say we can't muster our forces and we'll lose more victory points than this anyway. Plus, we only want to take engagements we can win because the victory points we're losing are just insignificant compared to the victory points we'll lose if we actually lose a battle. And we're going to be gaining a lot of victory points. Well, not actual victory points, but um, we're gaining a lot of they're about to collapse type stuff um, from our submarines. So. so this is much more satisfying. I fought using submarines. I always fight it because I don't think it's... A, it, this Is this interesting that we're just winning a war without doing anything? I don't know. Debatable. Two more months before we speed up... What? Nope. Three more months before we speed up these. Um, actually, two more... Yeah, we'll speed all of these up at the right point in time. We do have a nice monthly balance, so we can probably build yet another Ajax class, and that might be the last one. Four of them. Maybe we can get out a fifth, and then we'll call it after that. So they have invaded our possession in Newfoundland. So we're going to just take a foreign station hit, I think. Uh, our new CLs can now use double guns. That's actually pretty important. We sunk, oh, a light cruiser, an armored cruiser, an armed merchant cruiser. 18, we lost 9. Ooh, God, that's a lot. 9 to 3, oh, that's interesting. I'll should engage at Bermuda. Well, we're going to decline this. I don't have any forces here, so we'll decline that. Is this Southeast Asia? Or is it the Indian Ocean? We have three Glinder classes in the Indian Ocean. I think we decline. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. And this, we're, we need to switch some things over. Like, everyone needs to move to the east coast. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Our Caribbean forces need to move to the west, east coast so that we can try to stop this invasion. Probably this is whack-a-mole and they'll just start invading in the Caribbean next, but... Well, we don't really have a choice, do we? And I think the Renown, she can't really get out of a fight, so we're going to leave her in Northern Europe. Okay, so Northeast Asia. Let's move one of these down to Southeast Asia. I mean, I would really like to invade Southeast Asia, so put as much pressure there as I can. Okay, let's see if that works. Because, well, I mean, we... U.S. has 14 points here. We have 24. Okay, they have 189. Yeah, they definitely have more forces than us on the East Coast. It's true. Uh, it's such a micromanagement game to figure out what's the best thing to do with all these people. Let's move these into the Caribbean then. Actually, they have to go through something to get there. Darn it. have two on the east coast already. Well, let's just leave there. Don't know why the game is asking me to name all the American ships. <laughs> okay, 15 to 9. Jeez, terrible. 4 to 1. Small engagement. Okay, strange. Um, We're blockading them? It's here somewhere. Yeah, we actually started blockading them. What happened? They just decided to move all their forces out randomly? <laughs> okay, we'll take it. I mean, I'm. it's just a really a, a stroke of luck. And it also reminds me that with all these light cruisers, we might as well get them to do something. So with the Achilles helping with the, the point situation. We're just going to get them all to do raiding. That's right. That's a lot of raiders, but I think it'll be helpful in the end. A few extra raiders in Northern Europe where all all like convoys have to flow through this. So, Okay, 20. We'll go one more month. Good. Now that we've invaded Guantanamo Bay, we're basically just going to go even in the end. You done damaged some stuff. 23 to 2. This is much better. Uh, very good. 1 to 1. That's much better. Now bring in the, the same. Okay. Now this we will accept. Because declining I think is bad. But we could actually get lucky and just pinch off one ship or two. And then dive back into the depths. Sound like a submarine commander. But you know what I mean. So this is the this is how we kind of geared our navy. It's a it's a very role focused navy, the Royal Navy right now. That you know ships have their duties and they have to just perform them. Unfortunately, these ships don't have torpedo defense, so we really got to watch out for the really terrible. This is like horrible. Jar. I don't know, I was just trying to get them to go squad max or do something crazy. We need to turn away from this immediately. Turn! Watch out for those torpedoes! Okay, good. We got out. We got out! And I think we did a lot of damage to that light cruiser, supposedly. Let's take a look at what happened. Okay, we hit them with only three 14-inch shells, but if it was an actual light cruiser, that's devastating. And we could just win this engagement and disappear. Not even sure I want to do anything else. Oh, we sighted another vessel? Okay, just turn away. Avoid torpedoes. 
It's probably a destroyer launching torpedoes at us. What's our speed up to? We're in the mid 20s now. That's better. I'm willing to risk an engagement once we get up to full speed. Let's kind of loop lazily around. I'm going to go 27 here just to give my ships a tighter formation. Although technically a looser formation benefits us for torpedo launches, so never mind. Belay that order. Visibility is apparently really bad. Uh, it is daytime right now, so that we're not going to get any better visibility come daytime. It is daytime. And we could just sell back to port, which is really nice. Okay, what do we have here? We're pursuing, uh, this is what I like. I like this perspective. Uh, that's less useful. Okay, we probably have done ourselves poorly now. This is a, a group of destroyers. I don't know how we can combat this without taking massive torpedo damage. So I guess we dive in. Okay. Um, Charles Darwin is avoiding torpedoes. We are going to get some hits off on this Dreadnought, though. This may have been a fatal mistake going in here. Let's just turn back. Oh, this was... Wait. Okay. I have no idea. Let's read this closely. Adamant taking some hits. How's she doing? Okay. Darwin taking some hits. How's she doing? Good. We're going to pull out after this because we've done a lot of damage to this Dreadnought already. And there's no point in sticking around after we have done whatever damage we're going to do. Oh my goodness. Magazine blows up. <sighs> well, we can't say we're getting completely lucky. Nobody would... I don't think anybody would threaten us with the terms that we've gotten very lucky on this <laughs> playthrough. Okay. Um, we've done a lot of damage to this one up here, which is, I think, still going to be our target. Fortune is getting destroyed, and Flexible is being detached for what reason? Just falls out of line. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Let's get this Michigan, who's practically destroyed. Yes, let's go after her. Full speed ahead after her. Okay. Forget the other ones. Just go after the Michigan. Speed is our ally here. Get the hell out. Fortune has had another turret destroyed. She's only functioning with her rear. That's horrible. Yeah, the fortune peel off and have the inflexible cover for her. Ay 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 ay. What is your actual max speed? Twenty. Okay, well, just give us everything you got, and get out of here. Inflexible will have to be responsible for taking on this Michigan. She's doing admirably so far. Good. Good. Uh-oh. Rudder damaged. Oh, God. Jam port. We're boned. It's funny, I'm not even really moving her, and she still has her rudder jammed in a different direction. Well, at this point, we actually have to come back and save it. This might be just a, just a disaster. She's now going to charge right back into the... Well, it could, could be worse, I suppose, if they end up fleeing. Oh, my God. Inflexible, you don't know how important it is for you to save your darn rudder here. <sighs> okay, well, let's just get away with two. I guess we'll have to sacrifice the inflexible. She's on fire, my god. Yep. Man, we have not had amazing luck.
Now we will be able to coast all the way back in, so I don't have to worry about sinking due to flooding. So let them use all their torpedoes on the inflexible. Well, this is not going to be a victory, clearly. Okay, so let's just go ahead and move on back. Going nice and slow, I think this is good. Shouldn't have any problems going back home. To St. John's. Unfortunately, this is not gonna help with the, the, our defense of Newfoundland, but this might not be a friendly port much longer. Gonna speed up a little bit just to ensure that we get back to port. <laughs> it's the only way we, I think we lose these ships is if we don't get back to port in time. Let's take a brief moment. Confirm that that's true, yeah. The only way we can't get back to port now is if we... Uh, there it is. Okay. So, major victory, 250,000 to... Oh my god, we did not even sink that damn ship. Their ships always survive with just the smallest amount of life left. No, this is not the one. It was this one that had... Wow, it just destroyed the turrets, but nothing else. We destroyed their 16-inch turrets, but we couldn't sink it? Incredible. Huh. I mean... That's just not good. I'm not going to fight it, though. This is just what happens sometimes. Uh, we know better. Yay, we've invaded the Philippines. Okay, so let's move everyone out and back into the Caribbean. Fight on. Belfast has been sunk. Who the hell is in the Caribbean? Why do we only have one? Ah. One Glinder class. Well, we're going to have to decline this. Okay, I guess we have to fight this. We don't have a choice. But this is strategic warfare. We're gonna win, right? All right, well, if it is a, oh, if it's a light cruiser, I think we can win. We do have director firing. There it is, a few good hits already. We've gotten a lot of hits on them, actually. I want to try to avoid their torpedoes. That was good. And we got it. Well, that wasn't so bad. Well, okay, there's a major victory for us. Something to, ch <laughs> to start scratching at the lead that they've now accrued. And that's... I don't know, it's like we don't quite have enough Glinder classes to make this work. We need probably like 20 in order to strategically oppose uh, their vast numbers. Just because we have so many damn colonies all over the place. Like I need to spread myself pretty much this thin uh, in order to satisfy foreign stations. Which is unfortunate. Because what I'd like to do is have... And maybe I have to think about this off camera. Uh, I'd like to have just the minimum number of foreign stations satisfied. Ideally, none. I was, think I was thinking about this. Maybe we just sacrifice our unrest level and our foreign stations and just move everyone into the Caribbean and to the East Coast or into the West Coast and invade there. But at least we invaded in Southeast Asia. So that's the good news. But the bad news is we're about to lose. I mean, if we just go one for one in invasions, I'm fine. But we're currently going one for two, which is not good. Anyway, I'm going to call this video to a close here. It's been 40 minutes, so hopefully you enjoyed. We're back at war with the Americans. It might just be a fight with them again after this too, but let's not look too far ahead. Let's try to win this one. Hopefully our submarines can kick it up and actually cause them to, to collapse. And then we can take a few things. Probably we take the... Hopefully we've actually acquired the Philippines, and then we probably just start taking back territory 
Um, I'd say in the Caribbean. I'd say in the Caribbean so that when we go against their forces in the East Coast, we know that that's the only thing that they have. If we can discourage them from even putting forces in the Caribbean, that would be great. Then we can take the rest in the next war. So, so thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.